Hello, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com, where I don't just teach how to play songs on the guitar, but I teach the foundational core musicianship skills that we need to be able to express ourselves more freely and to sound better with anything that we play on the guitar and to find more joy and fulfillment along the way. In this lesson, we're going to talk about natural guitar harmonics. This is a very beginner friendly lesson. I'm going to explain natural harmonics on the guitar, what they are, how to play them. There's a few exercises that I will demonstrate and explain that are really fun to practice. If you're not a beginner, one of the exercises in this lesson might still be really useful and fun for you, which is how to play a pentatonic scale only using natural harmonics on the guitar. Let's go over the outline of the lesson and then we'll dive in. First, I'm going to explain what harmonics are, what overtones are, and what specifically natural harmonics are on the guitar. Then I will show you some practice exercises for working on natural harmonics on the guitar. This is where the real learning happens. It's best to take anything you wanna know about guitar related and find a way to practice it hands-on. Uh, so I love devising exercises to uh, help us internalize the concept I'm talking about. Then I'm gonna explain artificial harmonics, which is slightly different than natural harmonics. I'll have a couple exercises for working on artificial harmonics with single notes, with chords. Then I'll show you that pentatonic scale that we can play completely with natural harmonics on the guitar. That's the whole lesson, let's dive in. So I'm going to define and explain harmonics on the guitar specifically for guitarists. This is not a technical definition. This is not like a scientific explanation of it. It's very fascinating stuff if you wanna go deeper on it and look into more of the physics of it. But I'm just saying surface level, what we should know as guitarists is that every note that we think of as a pitch is actually called a fundamental, right? So if I'm playing the note A, then A is the fundamental pitch of that string that I just played. There are actually many pitches stacked on top of that note that are being simultaneously uh, vibrating in combination with that note. The, the unique combination of many sounds on top of each other is what creates something called timbre, which is the difference from hearing this as a guitar, hearing someone sing that note, hearing a tuba play it, hearing a piano play it, when we can identify a different sound from a different instrument, that's because of timbre, that's because of unique combinations of these stacks of multiple notes on top of each other. If that's a little confusing, don't worry, because we're going to get to hear some of those individual notes uh, that are stacked on top of the, the fundamental pitch. So with every fundamental pitch, there are a series of notes that are always there. The first kind of array of notes are is called the overtone series or the harmonic series. So after every fundamental pitch, there's another instance of that same pitch, an octave above. So if I play that A note, okay, this is in there too. That's A also an octave up. Now this is an amazing ear training exercise to actually now go back and play the fundamental and try to hear this inside of it because it is there. So you're hearing a combination of those two notes as well as many others. And that's what creates this fundamental sound, this unique kind of complex sound that we're hearing. If you've heard of a, what is called a sine wave, which a computer program, a synthesizer can generate, that is actually a pure note without any added harmonics on top of it. It's a very unique sound, but every sound in the real world actually has these harmonics, this texture, this timbre to it. Okay, so after that first harmonic that is above the fundamental, there's another harmonic that is a fifth of the original note. It's an octave and a fifth above. So that is this. I'll show you how to practice these exact pitches on the guitar in a moment, but I'm just having us hear it for now. This is the fundamental. This is an octave above. This is a fifth of that original fundamental. That's an octave and a fifth above. Now we get two octaves above. So this note, fundamental, this note, this note, this note, are all in that original pitch, okay? And the fact that we play the guitar is this awesome kind of physics experiment example and a, an advantage for us to be able to play with this string and actually see the physics happening. So let's do some very cool experiments here that you can practice yourself. So grab your guitar right now if you want to. You can pause the video, do these, and check it out for yourself. So here's what's happening. When I play the fundamental pitch, this open string, the entire range of the string is vibrating. 
just like we would think that it should be. Okay, so it's going up and down and vibrating. When I play the harmonic, that is the octave above that I just explained, well, that is splitting the string in two. So this is exactly the same distance from here to the 12th fret and from the 12th fret all the way to the bridge. This is exactly half of the string. It has to be half of the string. It has to be the exact midpoint of the string to be able to get this harmonic sound. What I'm actually doing is creating two different vibrations. One on this side, that's vibrating, as if it's its own string, right? So if I hold the fret down, same pitch. Because I just created, I'm now playing, when you hold the fret down, this is not playing, this is not vibrating up here. This is vibrating from here to here. Okay, from here to the bridge. I know that some of my views are cut off here, but you get, get what I'm saying. You can't see all the way to my bridge, that's okay. So from the 12th fret to the bridge, it is vibrating, it's half the string, that's why it's an octave up. It's exactly double the pitch, if you will. So when I do the harmonic version though, and I'll explain the technique of how to get it in one second, and I can let go free of my hands, I am actually now vibrating this side of the string and this side of the string, both of those are vibrating. Okay, so two things to check out here. One, if I create that harmonic and then touch the string here, it goes away. Oop, I gotta mute the other strings too. That's sympathetic vibration. I'll refer you to a video where I talk about that. Okay, if I muted all the other strings and then touch it anywhere that's not that spot, the center spot, it goes away, okay? Goes away. Okay, so here's how you get the harmonic. You want to, on the 12th fret, okay, so you think of the 12th fret as this space, but actually the 12th fret is the fret that is on, if you're looking at it as the guitar player view, your right side, the right side, the one that's actually cutting off the sound and making it shorter. So you want to put your finger directly above the fret the actual metal, directly above the metal, touch it ever so lightly. Don't push it down, just touch it lightly. And then once you get that pure sound, let go, and you have created a vibration on both sides there. Now what's very interesting when you do that, you can mute it like I showed you anywhere, but if you touch the spot right above the fret, it doesn't go away. I'm touching the string right there. You can't see me do it from my perspective, but do it for yourself. Touch the string right at that 12th fret harmonic spot. It is not vibrating there. So now we have this string and in the middle, we have this spot that is not vibrating at all. And on both sides, it's vibrating. Okay, so let's go to the next harmonic. The next harmonic, which I said is an octave and a fifth above. So this is not A, the note, this is E. This pitch is E. People often use this to tune the E string, which you can hear I'm a little out of tune. You hear that little bit of wobbling there. So I don't actually tune with that anymore. I used to because it's just slightly, just a couple cents of tuning, which is the term for uh, micro changes in tuning between half steps. Um, it's just a couple cents off, but when it's audible, it needs to be, <laughs> it needs to be fixed. So you can also play you know, any other E that is an octave up from here and get that same pitch. Okay, so this is E. Now it's the second harmonic in the series. So we have our fundamental, our octave, our fifth. Well, what this does physically is it splits the string into three now, holding a pick in this hand, three now. Okay, so that means that this distance right here, from here to here is vibrating. And then also, we're going, we should be able to find the exact third cutoff over here. So if you don't know where it is, you can just search for it. I got too close to it too quick. I was trying to demonstrate that you can kind of click around. There it is, right? So you can count up 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So the 19th fret and the seventh fret, exact same harmonic. You hear how it's literally the exact same sound. It's not just the same pitch. Like if I play this E and this E, 
Those are the same pitch, but they sound different because I played it on a thicker string and a slightly thinner string. So the so you can hear the weight of it kind of change. But this is precisely the same sound because each time I do that, if I touch my finger just slightly above the fret, the metal on the seventh fret, just slightly right there, exactly on that spot, and then let go. It's vibrating here. It's vibrating exactly the same distance from this seventh fret to this 19th fret. And it's vibrating the same exact distance from 19 all the way to the bridge. So in three different places. Now that means we have two spots on the string that are not vibrating. We have our full string, then we're vibrating here, here, and here. Two spots not vib vibrating. Do the test, make your harmonic. You should be able to mute it if you touch it anywhere except for on those two spots. I'm touching and it's not going away. Here's the cool thing to test. Play the harmonic over here or either spot. Touch the other spot. I'm touching it, it's not going away because even when I create the harmonic over here, it's making it not vibrate in that one tiny spot. So we have created a pitch that is exactly a split the original fundamental into three, a third of the original fundamental. Okay, let's continue on with the next harmonic in the overtone series. The next harmonic is another octave and it's on fret five, the most kind of typical place to memorize it would be fret five, exactly above the metal, fret five, barely touch it. If you gotta practice this a little bit, that's fine. Little kind of extra tip if you play two things so you can get a good harmonic. No matter what guitar you're playing, if you play closer to the bridge, It'll come out more. That's closer to the neck, closer to the bridge. Um, that's because you're playing, you're getting um, higher frequencies resonating when you're playing closer to the bridge. Th for the same reason, if you are playing an electric guitar, make sure your pickup is either in the middle or down to the bridge pickup. If I'm using this pickup, this pickup, if I'm here, that means I'm using this pickup by the neck. That means this is not being used at all, which means the harmonic is getting picked up here. It's gonna be much harder to hear it. It's there, but check this out. Ah, kind of went away when I changed pickups. Okay, on an acoustic guitar, just play close to the bridge. You'll get a really nice uh, sound there. So we're playing an octave and now we've split the string into four. So we have our original fundamental. You play this here. And it has split the string in there's, there's going to be four segments that are vibrating, which means there's three spots where it's not vibrating right here. And actually right here, the center point is going to be one of the spots. You can't play that there. You get the first harmonic, but when you play this harmonic here, it's not vibrating right at the 12th fret. And then you can find it in its other spot, which on this electric guitar, it's and on almost any guitar, it's going to be beyond the fretboard. So you gotta, gotta find it and kind of memorize where it is if you wanna know where that is up there. That pitch, that pitch, okay? The harmonics keep going into an inaudible range. You can get a lot more. This is a major third splitting the strings into, splitting the string into even more vibrating segments. And we don't need to go on, but you can kind of find more harmonics if you just explore around. When I was a kid, we had these tube things that you could swing and it would have the fundamental pitch. And if you sw swung the tube harder, it went up a harmonic. You swing it harder, it goes up another harmonic. You swing it harder, it goes up another harmonic. Harmonics are used in many places. So it's a very cool thing to know about. If, you if you've ever heard of Tuvan throat singing, it's a type of singing uh, from Mongolia, I believe, though it may be in more places than that, but that's where it's often associated with. 
there's it's a type of singing that is in the throat and then there's a harmonic above so there's this whistling harmonic sound that can change pitches while there's a fundamental so it's kind of a way to sing two notes at the same time it's a very cool thing if you have never heard of that before now that you know about harmonics might be a fun thing to uh, look into and see some demonstrations of so let me show you a few exercises where you can practice just the actual technique of creating harmonics it's very fun it's lovely it's meditative um, what i would do is just take fret five and seven and play practice playing a single harmonic kind of like you're just going up and down a scale You can let them all ring together or mute them. You can create variety, but I'm doing finger one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, and then one, three also on the way down, then flip it and go three, one. Pretty cool, right? And then three, one on the way down as well. Okay, then do the same thing from seven to 12. So you're going seven, 12, seven, 12. This is great practice for just the subtlety it doesn't, you, you got to do it many, many more times than, than your first time. Even though this, the concept is so simple, it takes this light accuracy to get it really nice. And I'm barely touching to get that. Don't worry if you can't reach here. That's not the point. Just jump your hand to play with that. Okay. And then the other way around, that's great for single notes. Let's do more than one note. The top three strings creates a minor chord. So the top three strings, if I just play them open, that's an E minor chord, a complete E minor triad. So now you can play E minor triad two octaves up by doing it on the fifth fret harmonic, or you could do it, you know, way up um, in that other spot there. There it is, hard to find, but that's really awesome. And then, that's a hard, that's a minor triad as well. It's just a fifth up from each of the uh, open strings. And then this is an octave up uh, minor triad. So technique wise, this is quite good to work on to have your finger flat and play multiple harmonics at once. So just practice that. I like to use my third finger, practice it with various fingers. If you like, my third finger is my favorite one to get multiple strings. Now let's expand that to all six strings. You can tr strum it like that to make sure every string is ringing or just go. At the beginning of the video, this is what I did. I used that next harmonic that we just talked about very quickly. That next harmonic is slightly off. They're not all perfectly above frets. The harmonic that is uh, the major third of the fundamental is slightly off from the actual fret um, in the kind of fourth fret space. And then little side tip with harmonics. This works on all guitars, but some better than others. I do this um, kind of wobble effect. It's very common with Telecasters and Stratocasters. Um, creates a kind of a vibrato. I do it on acoustic guitar as well, but it's not as pronounced. So a little fun side tip. If you're using any electric guitar, you can really get that. And if you're using distortion, harmonics will ring, 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 ring um, for a long time. And you can get that little effect on it as well. I'll quickly talk about artificial harmonics, give you a couple ways to practice that. This video is supposed to be more about natural harmonics, but it's good to explain what artificial harmonics are in contrast. Artificial harmonics are just harmonics that you're fretting. The physics are all the same. Now that you know about harmonics and how it works on the guitar, well, if you fret a note, so let's go ahead and fret string three, fret five. And let's pretend we're in a pentatonic scale that's A minor pentatonic or C major pentatonic. And if you're not there yet playing that kind of scale, it's so common to come across that if you're interested in improvising or noodling on the guitar and uh, working on scales, it's probably one of the first things that you will come across uh, as a guitar player. So let's play around with this spot. But let's just say we're third fret, uh, fifth fret, third string. And now I'm gonna go 12 frets up from here, okay? So I'm thinking, where's that fifth fret spot above the 12th fret? And you can kind of see it with fret dots if you have fret dots. Now I'm just going to pluck that as if 
Same technique of the harmonic. I'm touching it slightly and then I'm plucking. Okay, so we gotta talk about what the right hand is doing. There's three ways to do it, but let me demonstrate the sound first. So now, I can get any. I'm just playing a 12th, 12 frets above anything I play over here with the, with the hand. So I'm playing an octave above what I'm fretting, but I have to touch slightly with my first finger, just like the typical natural harmonic technique. And then I have to also pluck with the same hand. So here are the three ways to do it. One, you hold a pick and you hold your first finger out and you pluck with the pick while the first finger's touching. It's gonna be awkward, but I'm plucking like this while that first finger's touching and I'm holding the pick. The second way is to do the same thing, but pluck with your third finger, your A finger, okay? This is done in classical guitar. Okay, and the third way is to do the same thing once again, but you're plucking with your thumb. And you can pluck with any finger and you can touch the harmonic with any finger, but these are the most common ways to do it, so. So now I'm touching with my first finger, plucking with my thumb, which has a tiny bit of nail on it right now. So I'm getting that. Okay, let's address what you might be thinking, which is, well, there's all those different harmonics. We're just playing the 12th fret above, very cool. Then I know what note I'm playing, but if you, it can get crazy if you use other harmonics. So what if I go to the equivalent of, of the fifth fret up to get that octave and a fifth above? So I'm going five frets up. And this is totally a clean sound. And I can't play close to the bridge because I have to pluck over here. So it's harder for it to come out. If you're using distortion, those will scream. Those will sing, you know, really loudly in, in a very cool way. Side note that I didn't plan on mentioning pinch harmonics. Ignore this if you've never heard of that and don't care. Don't, it'll come up maybe someday later. It's a kind of a metal guitar thing, but a pinch harmonic is where all of this is the same. You just happen to be touching, you're plucking with the pick and touching the harmonic with the side of your thumb at the same time. I never use this, but I can get one. There's one. So here, that kind of thing. I'm just guessing. There it is. <laughs> and with distortion, you can basically get them anytime because there's harmonics everywhere and distortion enhances the harmonics. That's, that's one of the things that a distorted sound does is it accentuates the harmonics that are in a sound and makes it sustain longer. So side note there on what a pinch harmonic is. If you want to practice these artificial harmonics, do it in the way that I just showed you where you play whatever with the left hand and follow it with the right hand, an octave up, is the easiest at first, a uh, uh, five frets up is uh, also fine and I demonstrated that. If you wanna do it with a chord though, it's also very cool. Let's say I'm playing this open E chord. I can play a tw 12 frets up above each of those notes to get the harmonic sound. Or if I'm on A, pretty cool, because that's way up here. You'd never play that voicing way up there, so. Okay, or maybe I'll go to get this high ringing bell sound. So that's a fifth, five frets up above every note of the E chord. Okay, pretty cool. So practice that with a chord if you're interested in that as well, but mainly focus on the natural harmonics if this is all new to you. Completely with natural harmonics, we can play a complete E minor pentatonic scale. That's also the same thing as a G major pentatonic scale. If you don't know about scales, I have a scale videos for every scale type and how to map them out, play them on multiple positions on the guitar. I'll put a link to my major pentatonic scale video and my minor pentatonic scale video in the description. So you can check those out and get practicing on those. But if you want a musical application for this natural harmonic stuff, then this is very cool. Anywhere that you can play an E minor pentatonic scale, that's how I'm gonna be thinking of it as E minor, then you can throw these notes in there and you can have them overlap and be this kind of bell-like sound. So this note here is E. This is fifth fret harmonic on the fifth string. That's E, okay? If I go to the open G, I should just say G string, third string, 12th fret harmonic, 
you get the next note. So I'm gonna do this note for note here. You have the root, the minor third of the scale, next note. Next note is fifth fret of the D string, the fifth string. So now we have, okay, string five, string three, string four. Next one is string two, 12th fret. Oh, it's a little pattern physically. Okay, so practice those. We can keep going with the scale and now go fifth fret D string. Cool, you're hearing it kind of sound right. Okay, now, so that's fourth string, fifth fret, and then 12th fret, string one. Forgive my singing, but it makes me want to kind of sing along. Yeah, you hear that? That's the root. If you want to know how I'm thinking of the theory, root, flat three, four, five, flat seven, root of the scale. Okay, two more things we can do. We can go up above to the minor third above. That's the root right there. You can play fret five, string three to get the next note above the scale. Okay, we'll go back down. And a whole step below the bottom root, you can play the D string, fourth string, 12th fret. Okay, so if you're interested in this, fish around, use the video, find these sounds, practice it, drill it, so you can have this pentatonic scale ready to go. Um, if you're playing in the context where E minor pentatonic scale works, then it's quite fun to use this. If you're liking the sound of pentatonic and want some of my favorite ways to practice the pentatonic scale, I use what are called scale patterns to break up the order of the notes. I have a super simple single page PDF that's the top three pentatonic scale patterns to practice. There's a video that goes along with it and everything like that. If you want that resource, you can grab it with the link in the top of the description. That is free. It's nice to just have that tabs in front of you to kind of practice note for note in order, breaking up your pentatonic scale to make it sound more melodic, more interesting. So grab that if you want to with the link in the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash three patterns. If you want something to watch next, a great video to supplement this would be my video about sympathetic vibration because I often have a little mute kind of a scrunchy thing on the end of my guitar in a lot of videos and people ask me what it's about so i made a video explaining why that is on there and why you'll see anyone using that kind of thing and the answer is related to harmonics and overtones and sympathetic vibration so it's a pretty interesting video that goes well with this one so watch that next if you want something else to watch i'll put a link to that on the screen here if you're watching on youtube or you can go to the description to get that link i post a new lesson video every week next week's lesson is top 10 easy guitar songs for beginners. I haven't done a ton of beginner material on this channel and I'm getting some of that going. So it's gonna be a really cool lesson with uh, some recognizable songs that are easy to play. Hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks for watching, take care and happy practicing.